Hi and welcome to a new video. Today I would like to talk about my new product, the Dabauer Skylink X Direct Eye Frame. So Direct Eye has been a thing, especially since Ivy Bridge went into stopped soldering CPUs and when the whole the lidding topic started, so a lot of people always asked the question, why do you even put back the lid and why do you just replace the thermal paste? Why do you not just leave the heat spreader away? There are several reasons why it's not so easy to use a direct eye as a cooling solution. It also depends on your platform. So back in the days when with Ivy Bridge and also Haswell, there were actually solutions for direct eyes. So for example, MSI had the Deli Die Guard. Uh, I also had a product, it was called the Haswell OC frame. I didn't make that many units, it was also a very special product. And the, the biggest problem about those products was that if you just leave away the heat spreader, you obviously change the mounting height so usually you have like two to three millimeters less mounting height so your cooler has to sit lower but the problem is that most of the coolers no matter if it's an AIO or if it's a water cooler or a normal air cooler you have to change the mounting height because most of the mounting kits they have a fixed mounting height so usually if you just mount the cooler again it wouldn't have a good contact to the die. For Skylake, Cabby Lake and Coffee Lake it's a lot more complicated because with Skylake Intel started to use a very thin PCB which lowered the die height even more and also the problem is that the socket itself and with the socket I mean the plastic part with the pins in it, the, the socket itself um, is actually higher on the corners. So the corner or the plastic corners of the socket are sitting a bit higher than the core itself. So you cannot just mount a cooler on top and press the CPU down, it wouldn't work. So you would have to modify your cooler to make it fit, um, to make perfect contact with the die itself to press down the CPU into the socket. You may even ask why would you even do direct die? So the main reason is that you get rid of the heat spreader and you get rid of another layer of thermal paste, the layer which is between your die and your heat spreader. So all those are kind of heat barriers, they pre prevent your heat from flowing perfectly from the die to the cooler. So any additional layers are always worse for um, the performance. So that's the reason why you would go for direct die. With Skylake X things are a lot different especially because the package of the CPU is a lot different. So if we compare that to the de normal desktop socket the CPU is a lot bigger and we have this stacked PCB so we have the bottom PCB that makes eventual contact to the socket with the pins and then we have an additional PCB on top that um, contains the die. So that's a completely different thing and also the socket is a lot bigger and compared to Skylake, Cabby Lake, Coffee Lake you don't have the issue that the plastic corners of the socket are sitting higher than the die. You don't have that on Skylake X. But then on Skylake X you have the problem that you have so many pins. So you have to imagine that you, that you have to press down the CPU with a very high force to make sure that over 2000 pins have a proper contact to the CPU and usually you would need like a force of at least 500 newton or even more to make sure that the CPU has a good contact. But the thing is you cannot just mount the cooler on top because the bottom PCB is so thin that if you apply a lot of pressure in the middle on the core the bottom PCB will actually bend on the corners and you would lose contact to some of the devices for example you would lose a memory channel or maybe a PCI Express device. So the challenge was to create something that presses down the CPU keeps the CPU safe so you cannot kind of um, mount your CPU cooler wrong and damage the die. Also press down both of the CPUs with the same amount of pressure and then there's also the thing of mounting the CPU cooler at the exact same height, right? So I managed to solve all those problems with the Dabauer Skylink X Direct Die Frame. Um, I patented this thing in November already and since December we started with production so availability will be quite good even when you already see this, uh, this video. So we will have this product available at Case King and OC UK for start. We will work on availability with other stores also. For example, Amazon in the US will carry this in a bit. So let's take a closer look at the frame itself. So as you can see, the shape is very similar to the ILM. The ILM is actually this part you can see around the socket. So the whole mechanical construction you can see here that is usually applying the pressure of the CPU to push it into the socket. That is called the ILM, the integrated loading mechanism. And if you compare the shape of the ILM on the board to this, you can see it's exactly the same. So the outer dimensions and also the inner ones are designed to match the ILM so it's compatible with all the boards. And usually you would use those four holes to mount your CPU cooler, right? 
So as I said before, if we want to mount the CPU cooler without an IHS, we actually have to adjust the mounting height and the direct dial frame is already fixing this because you have the mounting holes included similar to the ILM, but the, the mounting height is adjusted to the same level to the core, so it's aligned. So you can just um, um, mount your CPU with a direct dial frame and you don't have to change anything. The direct dial frame also comes with this backplate included, which eventually replaces the backplate that is already sitting on the back of your mainboard. So the first thing you have to do is replace the ILM. So use the Torx uh, screwdriver that is included and go ahead and remove the ILM. Now you take the backplate and you put on those double-sided adhesive stickers. I included those to make the mounting a little bit easier. So you just peel off one of the sides take off one of the stickers and the sticky surface will allow the backplate to be mounted to the back of your mainboard. Just make sure that you align the four holes to the four holes on your mainboard. I usually only recommend to use one of the, of the sticky pads because the problem is if you use all four of them, they're extremely strong. You will probably not be able to remove your backplate anymore. So basically there are four included to have the same uh, mounting height on all areas on the backplate. So you just, as I said before, peel off one of those foils and stick the backplate to the back of your motherboard. Now I assume that you already prepared and deleted your chips. So uh, if you didn't do that, just take your um, Derbauer Dele Diamond X and go ahead, prepare your CPU. You have to clean the CPU entirely. So all the glue has to be removed. And after removing the glue, I also recommend to protect all those SMDs. So we have some resistors and also SMD caps on there. I, re I recommend to protect them with a little bit of nail polish because usually you would want to use liquid metal for the perfect heat transfer and liquid metal, as you know, is conductive and we don't want any of the liquid metal touching any of the SMDs. So I recommend using some nail polish on them. Now take your CPU and place it into the socket. In the next step, you take the Skylake X direct dial frame and place it on top of the CPU. The direct dial frame only works in one position. So you have this L shaped cutout here and this cutout fits into one part of the socket. As you can see, there's some kind of notch or not sure what it's called in English, but on there you can place the direct dial frame and that's the only position how it fits. Now you take the four screws and the Allen key and start fixing the Skylake X direct dial frame. For the start, you should only tighten them a little bit until you can feel that you need a little bit more force. And then you start doing only half a rotation on each screw and do you, you start mounting in like an X shape to make sure you have an even pressure onto the CPU. So that's it. You successfully mounted the Skylake X direct dial frame. Now you can mount the cooler. So the next step would obviously be to apply some thermal paste. I would always go for some liquid metal compound as this would lead into the best performance. And then you can just mount the cooler. In my case, I used an EK Supremacy Evo for this video. Just added the four screws on the side, add the EK Supremacy Evo on top, tighten it with the screws and you're done. The direct dive frame works with all Skylake X CPUs. So even 7800X or 7820X, it doesn't matter if it's a low core count or high core count CPU, all of those uh, CPUs are compatible. Talking about compatible, so I tested a lot of different coolers. I tested all the AIOs from NZXT, I tested all from Corsair, I tested water coolers from EK and Aqua Computer and Watercool. All of them were compatible. I cannot guarantee every single cooler that is on the market because I don't know what kind of fancy cooling solutions and mounting solutions some of the coolers have. But from what I know, almost all the coolers should be compatible. So of course you would ask, uh, why should I even do this? Is there even a temperature or performance benefit doing all this? Of course there is. So I did a testing with uh, 7900X and 7980XE. So we covered a low core count and a high core count CPU. So let's start with the 7900X. I overclocked the CPU to 4.3 gigahertz using a V-core of 1.2 volt. So the first test I did was normal deleting. So I just removed the heat spreader, added some liquid metal, put the lid back on, re-glued everything. And as you can see in the chart, the highest core on after one hour of Prime95 using 128K FFTs with a Kraken X62 AIO, you can see the highest core was at 76 degrees Celsius. Average core temperature was 72.2 degrees Celsius and the lowest of the hottest cores was 70 degrees Celsius. Now looking at direct dive frame, you can see the temperature dropped on the hottest core by five degrees Celsius to 71 degrees Celsius. Average, we went to 65.9 degrees Celsius. So that's a lower of six degrees Celsius and uh, lo the lowest of the hottest core 
went from 70 to 60, so that's a drop of 10 degrees Celsius. So moving on to the 7980XE, I did basically the same testing, only that I overclocked the CPU a little bit more because it was a lot better. So the CPU would run 4.5 gigahertz at 1.27 volt. And as you can see, when the CPU was normally deleted, the highest CPU temperature was 94 degrees Celsius. The average CPU temperature after one hour of Prime 95 was 89.9 degrees Celsius and the lowest of the hottest core was 82 degrees Celsius. So after using the direct dive frame, I could lower the highest temperature to 87, which was a drop of 7 degrees Celsius. The average core temperature dropped to 81.7, which is 8 degrees Celsius less and the lowest of the hottest cores was 76 degrees Celsius, which is also a drop of 6 degrees Celsius. So overall, I would say that your temperature should drop from like 5 to 10 degrees Celsius, obviously depending on the setup, depending on the load scenario. It also depends on your CPU, the thermal paste. I noticed that some of the CPUs are actually a little bit convex. So some of the, especially of the high core count CPUs, some of the dice are really a little bit bent. So it depends on how bent your chip is and then it depends on your cooler and everything. So yeah, but I think you can expect like 5 to 10 degrees Celsius lower temperatures on load. As I said before, the Skylake X Direct Dive Frame will be available at Kaskin and OCUK, so you will find the links in the description. OCUK also ships to the US as far as I know, so for US customers. We will also have availability over Amazon in the US in a bit. It just takes a little bit of time. Availability should be there at the point of this video already. So let me know in the comments what you think about my product and if you have any kind of questions, feel free to drop them in the comment down below. Otherwise, I wish you a very nice day. See you soon.